This is BBC America. I'm sorry about all this uh, cloak and dagger stuff in this, because this is a secret mission, this. Which is why we're in these disguises. Big secret thing, we're going to a very, very small island, and news spreads like wildfire, we don't want to get any out, so you're not going to be recognised, OK? Small island, more sheep than people, and it's a bit chilly, so I hope you've got your long johns. We must be going north. What, my opening? Oh, I hope not. <laughs> flight to the Falkland Islands on board an RAF TriStar of 216 Squadron and it's a real treat to hide out in the cockpit for part of the way at least. Look Mum, no hands. Approaching the Falklands there's a fighter escort not in our honour but on a training mission in case they're called upon to force down a hijacked airliner. down there with the white sandy beaches? That's uh, Port Stanley. That's where the only airport on the island used to be until they built the Mount Pleasant airfield. So we have to drive all the way back from there, 35 miles, to Stanley. Yes, it's, it's not the M1. <laughs> but the airport's separation from the island's main settlement is no real comfort to an undercover gardener. News of ground forces landing in the Falklands could well reach Stanley before we do. That's because although this flight carries mostly service personnel, and if a secret isn't safe with them, then who can you trust? It's also an air bridge between the Falklands and the UK, carrying islanders, tourists, fresh provisions, and quantities of gossip, too. Joe! They said it was windy. I'm glad I took my moustache off. It'd have blown it off. Our mission is to transform the garden at the King Edward VII Memorial Hospital in Stanley. Surprising, if possible, Norma Edwards, an islander with strong links with the hospital. She lives out of town, but we've just heard she's in Stanley until tomorrow night. So until dusk falls, we've to hide in our hotel before meeting Norman McGregor Edwards, our contact. You're on, Norman. <laughs> no, I'm not Norman. I'm Norman. Norman. That's Emma. Emma, Emma. Nice to meet you. Who are you, Emma? I'm, I'm tales, Norman's so. daughter. Have it straight with me. Does she know? She really doesn't know. No idea? None whatsoever. Oh, goodness for that. I'm glad somebody's uh, incapable of knowing what's going on. <laughs> Norman, we need to go where we're going. We'll go and have a look at the garden, shall we? Oh, lovely. Nice and sheltered. Excellent. Wonderful. Are there any blank canvas? I've got some nice rocks. Just got some nice rocks. I thought we'd build on that, really, because I want it to kind of reflect the Falklands' history <laughs> and the Falklands' present. So what I've gone for is this. In a way, it's sort of symbolic of the Falklands' past, really, because the centre of it is a compass rose, the points done in cobbles, north, south, east, west, uh, with this kind of gazebo over the top of it. So that becomes a focal point at the centre of the garden. There are paths on all sides so you can get access to this garden. Lots of planting, but quite tough planting because of the wind here, even though it is sheltered in here. Um, and then four geysers. Are we bringing more over from Hackney then, or what? Not diamond geysers, water geysers, squirts. <laughs> yeah, from Hackney. I <laughs> 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 the day he said that. Um, one thing which I've noticed is that in the middle of our garden we've got a tree, a holly bush, which was planted by Prince Charles. Yes. Um, what's happening to that? Well, madam, if you'll just hold that. <clears throat> I will bring out of my pocket a little letter with a royal crest on it and the Prince of Wales feathers on the back. And it says on this letter that I got last week, 
Dear Alan, I'm delighted to confirm that the Prince of Wales has agreed to you moving the olive tree, which his royal highness planted in the courtyard of King Edward VII of the Moy in Oxford and Stanley, during his visit to the Falklands in 99. The surprise garden which you're planning for the hospital sounds a wonderful idea, and his royal highness has asked me to send his warmest wishes to the staff and patients of the hospital, as well as the seemingly inexhaustible ground full steam. The seemingly? Inexhaustible. I'm exhausted. I'm <laughs> very exhausted. Uh, Amanda Foster, who's, who's his assistant. So, uh, yes, we can move it. She was a bit concerned. He said he didn't want it to die. Mm. We're just about dead on our feet after that long flight, so it's back to the hotel to sleep a chance to dream. Next morning, and we've a whole day to kill. Before Stanley stirs, the forces have come to rescue us from 12 hours of hiding in our hotel rooms. We're being whisked away out of town to look for some of the Falklands' famed wildlife. So our first real view of Stanley is from the air. The blue roofed complex is the hospital with the courtyard garden in the middle that we're itching to get on with. But that's exactly where Norma is today, visiting her mother who lives in the sheltered housing attached to the hospital. At some risk, our crew's there too. But Emma's persuaded her mum that it's for a film about how things have changed since the conflict with Argentina 20 years ago. First question, how many generations could they trace their family back as islanders? Well, it's the sixth generation, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Granny Fell, Granny Coots, right? Oh, yes. Granny Porter, you, me, Emma. Six, by my, my figures. Yes, that's right. Getting them mixed up. <laughs> Since the conflict with Argentina, much has changed for the two and a half thousand islanders. Not least the building of the base at Mount Pleasant, where Royal Navy, Army and Air Force personnel a station as a deterrent against any threat of invasion in the future. That's to ensure that as long as the islanders continue to desire the right to remain British, then they can. Meanwhile, we're flying over Camp. That's the name the islanders give to the wild, treeless areas beyond Stanley's city limits. Here, scattered settlements are home to the 350 Falkland Islanders who share the open spaces with countless sheep. This RAF Chinook is on a routine training mission to pick up a load on the other main island, West Falkland. They're dropping us off a safe distance from the penguins at Volunteer Point. Bet the beach is good. I bet it is. Gee, look. Oh. <gasps> what a picture to remember. These are king penguins. They're the most brilliantly marked of the lot. These lovely orange bits behind their ears, the orange bill and the orange top of the breast. It, it looks like fur from the distance, and then when you get close to you can see they're birds. It's really lots and lots of tiny feathers. And they have this wonderful way <laughs> of walking on their heels. These penguins have a special significance for me. In my first foray into showbiz, if you can call it that, was when I was about 11 years of age. 
and um, I had a role at the Royal Albert Hall as King Penguin. And we used to have to dance. We had a little dance uh, that we had to do, like a walking dance. And it was uh, to the march of the mods. <laughs> As we're picked up, the good news is that Norma has left Stanley on her way home to Fox Bay, 100 miles away on West Portland. America. Yes, I've had office romances. Loads. Not here. Another place I worked at. Good looking ones as well. You're watching Ground Force on BBC America. Unsolved murders. Cracked by the cold case squad. Unearth the secrets of the grave. The night that the trial wasn't the murder weapon. A brand new episode of Waking the Dead, tonight at 9. Mystery Mondays on BBC America. Our first day in the garden, and guess what? It's turned out nasty again. Oh, look at that! started. Good luck everybody. <laughs> Later. <laughs> oh lovely, the slip saw. Swing that on there. Slip saw. Now we do have a problem here in the Falkland Islands. There are no trees. So see this? This has been shipped all the way from the UK. Hi, hello, Charlie. All right, now you're Tim, aren't you? Yes, that's right. What's yeah. the soil like here? It looks um, quite solid. Very hard and solid, yes. Right. I actually rotivated this and laid this, sowed this grass here about 10 or 11 years ago. And there was old building blocks and bedsteads and all sorts came out of it then. So oh, so you've got them all out? Some of them. Oh, uh, no! <laughs> no right. doubt we'll find more today. Oh, good, good, <laughs> fantastic. Right, a bit more turf to come up yet, though, right. before we get to okay. that stage. Yes, I'll take the other barrow away. All right. Oh, wow. Oh, thank you. I'm glad we speeded that bit up, because it's taken us blooming ages. I finished the stripping at 20 to 1. And now I'm engaged to Miss Joan Hunter Dunn. Cheers. Cheers. A little literary allusion there for our chattering classes. Deferential to Betjeman. Thank you. <laughs> it's a poem. Oh, that well-known poem. <laughs> it is. Oh, is it? To anybody who reads. No. We'll do a bit more practice tonight. We'll do joined up tomorrow. <laughs> Joined up joinery here as Will and Tommy grapple with the finer points of the central feature's design. Um, that's upside down. And this one. <laughs> Lucky the camera ain't watching, Will. Aye. That looks good, doesn't it? <laughs> this is the easy bit. So whereabouts do you want this hole? A uh, little bit nearer to you. A bit to your left. Yeah, about there. Right, this will be interesting. I'll be all right in about another two hours. I'll have recovered. Charlie. <laughs> hello. Who are you? I'm from the local newspaper, Lisa Adele. Oh, hello, Penguin Lisa. News, we're called. All oh, right, <laughs> very original. <laughs> <laughs> I've got something here that I wanted to show you because it's relevant to what you're doing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, this is our paper. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, just before Christmas, we, um, we did a Christmas special and yeah. we asked lots of local people, councillors, teachers, what they wanted for Christmas. And John Farrow, the headmaster of the Infant Junior School, said he wanted you in his garden. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Yeah. And we couldn't give him the real thing, so we put a picture in, but it was a bit fuzzy. It seems that ground force gets shown here on the British Forces broadcasting channel. 
so, never one to resist the chance to actually come face to face with a possible fan, Charlie's surprising Mr. Fallow in his lunch hour. Merry Christmas, John. Oh. <laughs> oh. I'm slightly disappointed, though, I was only the third choice. Oh, oh. Goodness <laughs> gracious. <laughs> Look you. I know. You know? Yes. Hi, nice to meet you. It's a pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you. Oh. <laughs> and what have you come to do? I've just come to say Merry Christmas to you, and now I'm not doing your garden. <laughs> have you seen We're it? We're busy doing another yeah. one at the moment. Yeah. We're at the moment in the process of doing the hospital courtyard area. So yeah. we're doing that to surprise Norma. It's very difficult to keep secrets here. You know? We're cottoning on to <laughs> this one rapidly. <laughs> but I'm glad you've tackled something reasonable because I think this would be a year's job. Yeah. Year, it? it looks quite pretty with all the grasses there. Well, that's what I'm trying to do. It's the natural touch. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 breaking. Breaking. Ah, the wind! This was yeah. a problem. Can we catch it in time? Yeah. I mean, it was supposed to lift that way. That's why you put the straps on. The straps are supposed to support it on one at each side. Oh, yeah. Yes. So we shouldn't well, have he told it us to flip it that way. Who said flip it that you, way? You! You! <laughs> you can't get professionals to work with you these can't. days, can you? <laughs> How was your headmaster? Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Six foot four. Twenty-three. Stunning. Oh. Nice. Alright, Charlie, okay. Uh, Adrian's looking off. Right, right in the middle over here. What's that holly bush? Right. That's about right. What I do need to do, though, is to check north, south, east, and west at the compass point. So we might have to turn it slightly. Right. Is that magnetic north or true north? <laughs> <laughs> Don't hit me. <laughs> magnetic, just like you. <laughs> Very good. So when did you start on this? Uh, how, how this long morning, it's about this? Morning. Blimey, well, well, governor well, 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 and his lady well, wife. And the day right, a bit of, a bit so of Sunday. You yeah. then, for all those, those of us who are old enough to remember, you are today's Rex Hunt. I've never quite been described as that, <laughs> but, that's, but that's fine. Do you still have the hat yes. with the feathers? Then? Oh, indeed, indeed. Their uniform gets worn about five or six times a year, probably. Are there any vacancies? Because I'm a bit old for getting blisters now, and I think Highly I'm, selective. a hat with Highly feathers. Highly selective. Oh. Very rigid. Very oh, rigorous, what a rather. Shame. Very rigorous. But oh well. <laughs> but have you seen the garden at uh, Government House? Now there's no. a challenge. No. There's a yacht. Well, you must come and have a have a look at it. Excellent. That looks complicated. Look at that. Straight down the middle. The person who made this hospital was a geographer. It's exactly north-south. Hurrah! Want the Ground Force team to give you a backyard makeover courtesy of the Healing Garden? Log on to bbcamerica.com or healinggarden.com today. Don't ever dare show your face in this house again. Have you got that? She's gonna pay. I've just got to choose when. I don't like the way you behave. So clear off! EastEnders, the UK's most watched show. Saturdays from 1 Eastern, 10 Pacific on BBC America. You're watching Ground Force on BBC America. We transformed your home. We rescued your garden. Now, what not to wear. On the next episode, Mikhail's see the side is exposed. What not to wear. Tuesdays, 10 Eastern Pacific, only on BBC America. Hi. Just in front of us here, oh, yes. Mr. Alan Titchmark. Hello. 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 
you are Granny. We've heard yes. so much about you. You've been such a worry to us, you know. Oh. Well, we, we, do, we were just anxious that you shouldn't ring your daughter and say, you'll never oh, guess no, what's no, going no. on in the hospital garden. No, I shouldn't. <laughs> you think she'll be surprised? Oh, I think she will be. Yes, I'm sure she will. Now, you only live over in that corner, don't you? Just yes, there. there. So there'll be somewhere for you to come and sit and look, hopefully. Yes, it would be lovely. I've seen you on telly plenty of times. Getting wet, usually. <laughs> yeah, we don't normally do it in weather like this. We're completely at a loss when the sky's blue. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's nice to see I'm back to me hole. Yes. So. You don't fancy giving a hand at digging a hole then, Granny? Are you no, with a pick? You. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, it's only two because I finally finished work. So. Is it then? Yeah. You see all these little holes down here? Yes. Yeah. Can you turn them into bigger holes? Who's throwing their dust my way? They could bring the nail put on top of this. <laughs> they have done, actually. Over there. <laughs> You know, the way you do your makeup could really take off. <laughs> I'm serious, I mean, you know, this could be a new trend here. Charlie, can you use this driver? <laughs> Have you seen this other nifty idea with the compass? You see those two flat sides there? Yeah. They fit on there, and then you see that little spirit level in there? Uh huh, uh huh. And adjust it from the back so that the bubble is right on that black mark. Is that little bubble? Yeah. Now, I can go around and check now that they're all at the same lean because they should all be with the mark That's on the bubble. That's a clever Unbelievably, they're all level. Well, not level, they're all unlevel to the same degree. And to keep them that way, they're getting set in a dry concrete mix that'll take up moisture slowly and set them firm. But for tonight, as the stiff breeze that circles the Southern Ocean freshens, we're propping them firmly. Bill, travel. Thank you. So I'm going to entrust you with my trial. Thank you. And daughter of Madame Tootsie. Of Serena. Thank you. Oh, one other tip. Before you bed them in, the stones, if you dip them in a bucket of water, that should help the adhesion between the stones and the mortar. That was a bond, yep, okay. Yeah. So I'll get you a bucket of water. Right. And a pair of knee pads for your knees, dear. Okay? That's very kind of you. Um, would there by any chance be a glass of champagne in there? Well, if there is, you won't see me for at least a couple of hours. Some people we haven't seen for 36 hours are our forces liaison officers. <laughs> ah, Rob! Hi, Charlie. Bruce. Hi, Charlie. Where were you yesterday? Playing in the helicopter, I suppose. No, no, it was yeah. so windy yesterday, the road was closed. It was blowing 50 knots at Mount Pleasant, and I'm afraid the road was closed, so we couldn't come and help you yesterday. All oh, right, then. Can I introduce you to Davy? You didn't Hi, meet Davey. him. Hi, Davy. How you doing? All hey. right. And, and you know Sue from, uh, from the helicopter. Yes, oh. lots of trenches to dig, though, at the moment, because this is a cable for all the water features. So, trench digging. Are you good? Excellent. <laughs> yeah. Army. I'd like Army. to hear that. Excellent for that. Thank I know you. they're not big, but it's a narrow channel, and there's a 
pickaxe over there if you want to just go along and get all the loose stuff out. No problem. Okay, good. <laughs> good night. However sophisticated defence systems become, every soldier can dig in, and this mini trench for the pump cables can be considered job done. The more observant amongst you will have noticed that the north on this compass is facing towards the sun. Hold on, Will. That's rather handsome. You all right? Yeah. Wow. Well, I need this to determine the height, don't I? The height? Is that similar to the width? People Correct. in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. No, shouldn't throw stones. <laughs> shouldn't throw stones, exactly what I said there. It always irritates me when people say six. He came in six. He came in six. It's six, isn't it? Not sick. Well, he came in after the fifth one. <laughs> so there's a gap there, is there? Yep, a little bit. The plan for tomorrow is to bring Norma through here on her way to a reception at Government House. Her husband, Roger, will fly her from Fox Bay, especially for the reception, but like all the best laid plans... Alan? Hi. Good yeah. to see you again. How are you? Oh, yeah, Great well. day, isn't it? Super. Oh, yeah. Well, um, bit of bit of, bit of work to be done, because uh, Norma yes. is a bit reluctant to sort of come in to a, a reception on a Sunday. can understand that. She's out <laughs> she's not going to come back. Well, that, that has got to be worked at. I mean, I have great confidence, and I'm sure you have great confidence. <laughs> I have great so confidence we'll in off. the governor. The, what I've got to do, I mean, you could be making a kind of uh, a program called End of a Career, but instead I'm going to phone Norma. She doesn't ever trust what any diplomat says, and I'm going to have to say to her, Norma, trust me, come to my party. Norma, great to be in touch with you. How are you? <laughs> Bit of a problem, um, but... Uh, I think, uh, you know, you've got the, the invitation, haven't you, tomorrow? Oh, oh you chose that one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> and Roger can fly. You mean straight, straight weather, isn't it? Perfect. Linda would love to see you as, as well. I mean, you know, she hasn't uh, seen you for a long time. Well, last week, yes, yeah, she did, it's true. She's now in position. That's, uh, this is all a bit difficult, really. Oh. Well, Norma or not, it looks like Tommy's car is ready for erecting. Oh. You have to admire the persistence of a British diplomat in the corner, don't you? Wow. Well, um, you know, what can I say, Norma? Alan? Yes. Have you got a moment? Sorry. Let's, uh, cross this Liverpool Cathedral or, or Millennium Door. You're right, you spotted right. it, yes. yes. Have his wig well. I think I've got good news for you. Right? I think we've got good news. I've been on the phone to, uh, to Norma. Yeah. And I think for the purpose of, uh, today, she trusts me. So I think we'll uh, we'll have a, so she a will surprise come back. Set. I'm pretty sure of that. If you can do it, if a diplomat <laughs> nobody could do it. No, no, no. <laughs> okay. Thank you very All much. Right. Well, we'll see you as well tomorrow. Yes, indeed. Look forward to that. Wonderful. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Cheers. Bye. This is a sandstone from West Fulton, right? That's right, from Fox Bay. It's actually called the Fox Bay Sandstone. And uh, it's about 340 million years old. It's nice gear, but very hard. The quarry was originally opened for the gravestones in the graveyard up here. There was an old boy called Tommy Braxton who used to be our stonemason and uh, he actually made his own gravestone and he carved it Thomas Braxton and 1908 and then left it and he died in 1989 because we're all starting to worry well, that if he ended up living until 1990 none of us would be able to put the Yet 9 in. <laughs> That's nice isn't it? It is. Poor old Tommy working his life out and then you wash him dead before 1990. <laughs> Anyhow, are we going to put some posing down, or are we just... Yeah. What are you doing here? Well, I've come to help. You've got two uh, girls at once. Uh, Doesn't that just make you a great uh, uh, uh. Well, I can't help Alan, and I can't put my grids on the concrete. Well, I've got to tell you something now. I wanted to keep confidential. Yeah. Alan's <laughs> actually beyond help. <laughs>
Bless you. Excuse That's me. That's diluted the mixture nicely. I didn't gooby everywhere, thank you, Alan. <laughs> what? I said I didn't gooby everywhere, gooby. thank you. No bones well, came out. Oh, please. <laughs> what is this, ground force or gross force? <laughs> Children all over the land going in the old doors and saying that now. Their mother's saying, where did you get that from? Charlie Dimmock. Right, it's going to give Will a bit of stress now. Did you just drop your wallet, Alan? <laughs> Are you being rude about my fiduciary arrangement? Oh, what does that mean? I don't know, but it sounded good, didn't it? <laughs> it's just a quarter of an inch too low. Shall I leave it? No. Last slab of the day. The job's worth doing. It's worth doing properly. <laughs> oh, you were just being picky now. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and that. Ladies and gentlemen, is that. Thank you, and good night. You're watching Ground Force on BBC America. What is it about a bunch of elephant seals that puts me in mind of Tommy Walsh in the morning? Magnificent beasts are on Sea Lion Island, an unmissable excursion. But I'm off to Stanley's Garden Centre to see Tim Miller to get our plants at last. I've seen this right. tree looping all over the place. It, it is. It is. Garden. Yep, no, it does really well, well, very well in the Falklands. The, the it's a good long looping. season of flower. It is, yes. Yeah, and if they flower fairly early, we find that if you then deadhead them, you can actually get a, like a sort of a second, a, a second flush of flowers uh, um, coming. I won't get one on the really plane though. What are they? Are they are bonny there? <laughs> no, they're really good. Oh. Anyway, yes. Here's what we've got uh, in mind for uh, for you. Oh, well, we're looking at an English country garden, really, aren't we? Yes. Lavender cotton, Santa Lina, Hevig, New Zealand, mm -hmm. yes. fuchsias, yes. lupins, yes. and Bodleia yeah, butterfly bush. Yes. Now that's a thing. Many butterflies in the fall. Uh, there are two. There are two types. Um, they don't come out that often with with our windy weather, but you, you do see them out on a on a nice sunny day. Yes, again, you say it's the wind. Yes, yes, yes. Creates the problem. Yes, yes, we have we have no bees though, unfortunately, which does does sort of limit limit the pollination of flowers. No uh, bees. No, no bees. No bees. No. How long have you been living here? I'm a native. I'm an islander. Yes, my, my roots go back um, about 160 odd years to the, the early 1840s. Have you always been happy here then? You've never felt the need to sort of fly away a bit? Uh, no, I, I, I've spent a fair, fair amount of time in England. I went to school and then college in England, but I, I'd always, you know, my roots are here and I've always wanted to come back. As one, one person once said to me, where you're born isn't really where, where what matters. It's where you want to die that matters. I guess you've chosen. I think so, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, look, I'll give you a hand there. We'd better get this lot down there. Yep, that's and right. And start greening up the forks. Yes, we had indeed. Right, OK. okay. I'll okay. go and it here. Sure then. Mm -hmm. OK. Unlike the islanders, for many, like the soldiers who put up this road sign, the Falklands will always be a very, very long way from home. Oh, you've 
you've done well. Look what I've got. Oh, hey, plants at long last. Oh, you still recognise them? It seems so long since we saw one, doesn't it? <laughs> well, I know what that plant is. What? That's a lobelia. A um, lobelia? Not even remotely close. OK. It ends in IA. Oh. Budlia. That's what I meant. The one that grows out of the parapet walls on roofs and everything. Yeah, London bomb site. That's it. Great coloniser. Good for butterflies, except in the Falklands, I've learned they only have two butterflies. <laughs> and no bees. No bees? No bees. Oh. If there's no bees, then it's uglier. <laughs> Casting her pearls among the swine, Charlie can console herself that her water features are coming on apace. Was there any particular reason that you piled all the soil there rather than on the garden, where we need it? Well, I thought it might make an interesting debating point from your point of view, actually. What, so we can move it again? Well, I didn't want it here. Because well, I why didn't you put it over there? Well, because as I'm shoving, that was there, see? <laughs> it can be moved later. Oh, great, yeah. I've got more important things to do. <laughs> Don't start. <laughs> Round one. All around us, the King Edward VII Memorial Hospital sticks to its routines, but there's definitely a distraction this visiting time. Diamond geezer. <laughs> the peat soil has really dried out hard. It isn't too full of rubbish, but it certainly needs loosening up with lots of digging. <laughs> Well prepared, it's like planting in a grow bag, but it will need watering well. So how do you come to be working for Tim, Jan? Well, I'm married to him. <laughs> oh, that's a good reason why. It never worked for me, though. But... No, it'd be more profitable if I was just working for him. <laughs> Are you a native Falklander as well, then? No, I've been here ten years. I come from Shropshire. So where did you meet? Um, at a games fair in Shropshire. I was with my cub pack, and he was just passing through, and we met them. So you're clearly very strongly attracted to one another, then, were you? Yes, I suppose so. And did he drop you a line, then, from the Falklands to take cover? Yeah. And then I came over and saw what the Falklands was like in the summer, and I thought, I could hack this. And then I came over to see what the Falklands was like in the winter, and it was better than Shropshire, so I thought, I'll come down here. So here you are. Oh, what a lovely story. Oh. <laughs> You don't get paid a lot for gardening, do you? Get paid nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so both Jan and I think it's a wonderful job if you just want job satisfaction. But if you're coming into it for money, there's no money in it unless you become a very famous TV presenter. Like Charlie Dimmock. <laughs> People say I'm the best boss. They go, oh, you know, we've never worked in a place like this before. You're such a laugh. You get the best out of us. And I go, you know, c'est la vie. If that's true, excellent. You're watching Ground Force on BBC America. Nice and sunny and warm. It's two o'clock. And after all that fuss about the Prince of Wales' holly, we found we didn't need to move it in the end at all. So I'm just making sure it gets a good drink. So here we are, sir. Going terribly well. Didn't need to move it. Thank you for the permission. You've now got a fountain by the side of you. Well, really, look, in three hours' time, you'll have a complete garden. Mind you, I'm not overconfident. 
Plantin's doing quite well with a wonderful army, literally, in battle dress, planting there. But there's half that painting to do down there, all that painting to do down there, and still the roof top on that in three hours. Ah! helpers are pressed into service but there is a limit to just how quickly these heavy slabs can be laid and Tom is at it this is getting some tough we've got seas of gravel we've got four water features We've got a cathedral in the middle of the garden, about 100 square metres of natural paving, and we get one extra day to do it. This job gets harder and harder. It's all right, I'm glad you don't come every week. But not here. No, not here. They're going to go down to my house first to change. So what time will they come here? They're meant to be dropping eggs off for Granny at about five o'clock before they go to the government house. Now, does your father know not to come here before five o'clock? Dad knows not to come here before five o'clock. Right, we've got an hour and a half to finish. Fine. Get, get on with your grafting. I'll get on with There's nowhere we can stop them, is there? So we've stuck with it then. Yep. Right. Hour and a half. That's Norma, spotted by our secret camera, touching down at Stanley Airport. Willie, these might be a bit too long. Can you throw me down that template? What a good throw. Does that mean there's going to be sawdust? No, we'll cut it with the scissors. Well, why do you bring things in and then, you know, we just finished it? Enough bickering, Norma's down, and the roof still isn't up. Well, only two rafters. I know, what I hope is cutting everything out there so it can just go pop, pop, pop. <laughs> That's what I'm relying on. <laughs> You're half an inch out. Not if they're all together, are they? Well, look at that. Yeah, Paul, what? Yeah. Well, two are screwed on. 15 minutes before she gets here. I've almost finished my painting. The boys are taking a little longer. I might never get out. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've just become a feature. <laughs> I can't get out now, I got in. No, Will, you want me in it? You have to keep pushing there, that's great. Keep the pressure up. Right. Right. Put the sword up. I made a fatal error. I got in through here because it's tapered. I can't get out. You got in. Let me pull the other side, Tommy. Hang on. Oh! Yes! Ah. Thank you. Not a moment too soon. They're here. They're just passing the war memorial. She's coming. They're outside the front of the house now. Yeah, no, 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 no. She's coming in that way. Come round here. Oh! <laughs> stupid! Stupid boy. Hello, Mum. You look rather nice. Where's Willie? Where's Willie? I don't know. What's going on? Come this way. 
Come on, keep coming. I don't know what all those vehicles are for. But anyway, come up here. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> Isn't this wonderful? Oh, my goodness. Oh, Norma. Who did this? Oh, my God, how lovely to see you. You've been, oh. you've been ground forced. <laughs> oh, look at this well. Is this oh, my goodness. It's beautiful. When we arrived, you were still here. We were locked in our hotel room. Oh, so you couldn't see us. So we were not up when you went away. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think this is marvellous. And we've got a water feature. Four of them. Four of them. Oh, oh. Phew. Very calming gardening, isn't it? This is a public garden where patients and visitors should be able to enjoy the path, the seats and the vistas, and on calm days, the four geezers. A present from us four geezers, me, Tommy, Charlie and Will, oh, and HRH, to the very special people of the Falkland Islands. I'll put my best ribbon tucker on, just in case there's somebody important I've got to meet, and I'm glad I did. <laughs> Even though there was a <laughs> I'm just absolutely gobsmacked and delighted, and thank you very, very much. It's a pleasure. Would you like a glass or something? Oh, I'd love a glass or something. That sounds nice. <laughs> we were so sure you must have known. I don't know how you managed to keep it all. <laughs> Usually people know before you know yourself. You, know? you get told what you don't. Yeah. <laughs> I'll sit quietly, Norma. <laughs> it's hard for me. <laughs> now, what a time we've had. From the place with white sand, turquoise sea, blue skies, wonderful weather, seals and penguins. That's the Falklands. Cheers! Bye-bye. Cheers to Grand Tour. <laughs> Alan, I've just got a small momentum for you from uh, all the service people here in the Falklands. Uh, I, know oh. you, I know you collect these. Oh, you and this star! Is a, little, a little memento. Thank you, you very much. Memento for your boat. <laughs> but the British forces overseas did either right. Hey! 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 I'll fight off the flagpole. Hey! 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 Hey!